Resource Watch is brought to you in association with Tebe Investment Corporation. Coal mining, even open cast coal mining, is a tough business, but somebody has to do it. We're speaking with Centula Mining Limited and finding out how deep this company digs. I'm Lizzie Pombandra, and this is Resource Watch. Let's take a look now at the news making headlines in the sector this week. Mozambique power company EDM has contracted a Japanese consortium to construct the country's second natural gas-powered electricity generation plant worth over $166 million. The plant, once completed, will have a capacity of 100 megawatts. South African oil company PetroSA has produced 14% less refined product in 2013-2014 than budgeted due to a diminishing gas feedstock. Inadequate feedstock will remain a constraint on its future performance. Diamond Company De Beers plans to preserve its diamond exploration spend in South Africa at 30 million rands to 35 million rand a year. The company, which currently mines at Venetia in Limpopo province and at Furtsput in the Free State, has built up a large volume of geological data in South Africa over the years. Centula is a diversified mining company with an established footprint across the African continent. Recently, they decided to offload certain idle property in the DRC to Ozone Drilling Mauritius, this for about 2.4 million US dollars. Google Etikele spoke to their CEO, Robin Berry. Robin Berry, Chief Executive of Centula Mining, thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Maybe if you can give us an overview of the operating environment uh, because of the company that you lead, it does have a market cap of around 140 million. It is a tough environment. We know about the strikes and the ongoing uh, concerns overall, but uh, how have you managed to navigate through the tough trajectory? Look, I think one of the things that we've had to do is focus. Um, you know, we were a company that had a foot in, in the actual ownership of, of assets and, and a foot in the service provision. We've focused on service provision and obviously over the last period we've uh, sold off many of our uh, ownership or stakes in various assets and by doing so we've also consolidated our businesses uh, quite successfully. So I think it's about focus, um, focusing what we, what we believe we're good at. The service versus the uh, ownership of the assets, how does that differ? Look, obviously ownership of assets uh, requires a very different management structure, it, it requires a very different capital structure. And I think, you know, what we found was we were neither fish nor fowl, and you have to be one or the other. Our core business, and that's, that's what we grew out of, was to provide mining services to others, and, and specifically, you know, uh, do mining where um, some of the majors uh, don't want to invest their capital. Mm. Maybe if you can paint a picture for us as to how tough it really is. Uh, and I make mention of this because of the fact that there was a recent survey conducted by Deloitte where they mentioned that the regulatory environment, political instability, as well as the amount of red tape uh, that CEOs have to go through, the top 100 companies actually, that's actually what keeps them awake at night. Does this stem true for you? It, it does. You know, obviously, um, you know, we follow the, the, the miners and, and the explorers. And when things get tough for them, you know, obviously they look at trying to cut their costs and, and of course we're as a service provider, we're at the bottom end of that, that food chain. But I think, you know, where, where we do find ourselves in, in a reasonable sort of space is that, you know, when um, a mining company or an explorer doesn't want to invest a lot of capital but has a good resource to, to, to start up, you know, we're the guys they, they call upon and, you know, that's our, that's our core is, is to provide those services and to do it as efficiently as, as, as possible and even better than what um, than some of the majors can, I believe. Mm. You mentioned that you might be at the bottom end of the food chain. How else then are you looking at strategies to make your company a defensive one? Well, I think, you know, we've been reasonably successful in that we do have a diverse set of service provisions um, from open cost mining, uh, exploration, we have a small crane company, we do a bit of uh, drilling and blasting for, for both our uh, mining companies as well as others. And I think we've also got a reasonable sort of spread across the commodity sector. You know, we're in coal predominantly, platinum exposure, chrome, base metals, a bit of diamonds and even gold. So, and I think 
to, to sort of top that off, we're also in a few jurisdictions. We're not just in South Africa, we're not just in Southern Africa, but we've got a, a reasonable African footprint. So mm -hmm. I think all three sort of combine to, to at least give us some sort of defensibility in, in, in what is, as you say, a very tough sector today. What about the macroeconomic environment? We always hear about the slowdown in China, where the growth rate is at 7%, slowing down for them, but 7% is quite an impressive number nonetheless. But the impact that that has on commodity prices and commodities that you happen to uh, uh, take care of yourself. Look, I think, you know, uh, the early part of the 2000s, we saw this massive growth. We saw a lot of capacity coming on. We saw possibly even um, some resources or, or, or the development of some resources that probably wouldn't weather the, the lower end of the cycle. What we're seeing is a big pullback. Clearly, that's 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 not great for for overall um, commodity uh, growth and and obviously pricing. But at the same time, I think it's very necessary. And I think as as part of that, we're going to see over the next probably 18 months, three years, a, a, a sort of a, a core growing again. And I think it's it's the companies that can weather that that are going to be the survivors and and see this through. I know it sounds a little bit sort of uh, negative in the short term, mm. but I think that's what that's what one has to be realistic about. So the bear market might be coming to an end in a nutshell. <laughs> I believe so, yes. We certainly hope so. But I also want to touch on to how this correlates then with your share price performance. So year to date, it has lost 40% of its value. The, your share price has reached highs, peaks of around four rand a piece just over five years ago. But today, it's sitting at 25 cents a share. Is this reflective of the company and the organization itself and the operating uh, activities at the mine? Or is it just market sentiment overall across the board for resources? I think it's a, it's a bit of both, but I think predominantly it's market sentiment. We obviously have a, a fairly checkered history, which um, we've worked through over many years. And uh, on top of that, we've also reduced our debt significantly, which I think also stands us in reasonable stead for this sort of the next, next period. I think market sentiment in general looks at the service provision and, of course, the service provision to the mining industry in, in a fairly negative way today. So I think it comes back to, um, you know, what are the fundamentals of the company? Um, we certainly have the asset base to, to, to support the, the size of the company. It's over a billion rand. And I think at the same time, you know, we've done everything to, to gear the company up for, let's say, the, 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 the sort of stable uh, time that we're going to see for the next period and then, and then growth beyond that. So I think the, the share pr price is reflective of, of predominantly sentiment today mm -hmm. and, and not reality. Has that had any impact on your capital raising initiatives? It, it has to some degree. Obviously, we've we've worked very hard to reduce our debt, uh, and in so doing, you know, we've sold off, let's say, our non-core assets or our non-cash generating assets. And I think on that basis, you know, we will see a re-rating once all of those initiatives come to the fore. And then I think, you know, once um, once the banks see that, you know, we have the ability to really focus on on what we believe we're good at, I think then, you know, we will we will see uh, some attraction back to the sector. So we're finding optimism. The challenges have uh, been experienced in the past. Your hopes and objectives for Centula Mining and maybe even the resources sector as a whole over the next five years, what are they? Look, as, as far as Centula is concerned, we've, we've cleaned the company up. We've, we've uh, refocused it. We've, um, you know, we're now, a, 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 let's say, a pure mining services provider. We've got one asset uh, that we're still trying to sell, but in the interim, we will, we will operate that asset. Um, and I think, you know, that stands us in good stead to grow off a, let's say, a reduced footprint, but certainly still a, a, a very uh, good footprint, um, good provision of services into the coal sector, which I think is, is a fairly uh, robust sector, although, you know, pricing is off. Our focus is in the, in the energy side of it, the, the especially coal provision to Eskom, and, and, you know, that's going to be fairly stable over the next, over the next period. I think as far as the sector is concerned, um, and, and it has been talked about a lot of late, Efficiency does have to play a role, mm. and and I know that goes contrary to the the um, the whole um, employment sort of uh, generation that this industry has been relied on for for many years. But that efficiency will obviously then you know attract investment, growth, and 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 ultimately the the type of employment we're really looking for, not lots of uh, low level employment, but mm. but skilled employment. And I think that's what the industry needs to sort of uh, redevelop itself into. In your liaisons with the unions beforehand, is this a concept that they've managed to grasp? I think slowly, uh, and especially in, in, in our sort of side of the sector where we're in service provision, it is a little bit easier because we, we obviously provide um, skills uh, and we operate large pieces of equipment. But at, at the same time, it's, it's a concept we're trying to drive, is, is one of let's be more efficient, 
we can then operate on more sites and, and clearly employment comes on the back of that. Mm. Also interesting, which is unique to Central, is that you mentioned the geographical diversification. How important is that? Because we always hear about the African growth story going forward. Look, I think it's, it's incredibly important. You know, we, we're in there from the grassroots. We do exploration across the continent. That sort of leads to, to ultimately feasibility studies on projects. It leads to the development of mines. I think in most cases, um, you know, those miners are going to come in and, and, and try and limit their, their capital exposure initially. That means, you know, that, that we have a foot in the door in terms of service provision. But I think it is important also to look beyond just the, the boundaries of, let's say, Southern Africa, because mm. we, we're pretty well established in Southern Africa. And, you know, to some of those jurisdictions where mining is, 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 is certainly not as uh, developed as it is in, in South and Southern Africa. So what does this mean for talent then and talent retention? Because sometimes the big players might be the ones who are able to pick them up. Look, I think we've, we, we've, we've come from a, a scenario where, you know, talent was, was certainly in, in very short supply. And, um, you know, with the, 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 the growth in the sort of earlier part of um, the 2000s, you know, everybody was snapped up. Mm. I think we are seeing a little bit of a, a reality check there. Uh, and, and certainly right now, I, I believe, you know, it's time to sort of start attracting some of that talent that, that some of the majors have, have let go of, na of late. But at the same time, it's important that they see that, you know, this is, this, is an, this is a new future. This is not just another a mining company or another big conglomerate where you'll be part of, the, part of a big system. A new future. On that note, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your time today, uh, Robin Berry, Chief Executive of Centre. <laughs> Now gold has many uses aside from its monetary and symbolic value. It can also be a pampering experience to say the least. Let's have a look at the craze of gold facials. Here's our gem of the week. Since ancient times, gold has been used to depict status in society. The metal has a variety of uses from adornment to conducting electricity. And because it's edible, its decadence also extends to a variety of uses in food and drink. In some parts of Asia, they put gold in fruit, coffee, and even tea. And since the 1500s, Europeans have been putting gold leaf in bottles of liqueur, such as Danzinga Goldvesa and Goldschlager. Now, through the combination of science and opulence, you can even have an anti-aging gold facial. A jewel mask with collagen and pure 24 karat gold and sparkling diamond dust, to be precise. This one of a kind product is also filled with vitamins A and C and grapeseed oil. The golden diamond dust works on illuminating the face, so it basically reflects light off your skin, giving you that ultimate radiance that illumination, like you're shining bright like a diamond. Um, and for people who really want something very advanced when it comes to skincare, you will opt for the gold mask. The range has quite developed into something very luxurious, very um, sought after. I mean, if you think of gold, um, it's associated with the best of the best. So that's basically why they decided to put gold into the, the mask. And as we were working with the products, we obviously had to design a treatment to complement this ultra luxurious, advanced anti-aging range. Whether you're trying to turn back time or simply invigorating your tired skin, Theravine's gold collagen film will leave you glowing. That's it for this week's show. Do stay in touch. That's by following me at Nozi Pombandu and of course using our hashtag resource watch. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.